Next one I wanna cover is using your Google Calendar as an appointment booker. And this is a super, super awesome tool. Not many people know about this because plenty of other apps out there that filled this gap for Google. In the old days of Google Workspace, one of the best things about Google and where it really shone and stood aside from the Microsoft world was that Google was really open to third-party developers creating apps and extensions to integrate with the Google Workspace ecosystem, which was at the time Google for Business, Google Apps, G Suite, you know, the million different names that it's been through. And one of the great things was because it was web-based, it made it really easy for developers to create additional tools. One of those tools that many developers rushed to create was appointment scheduling tools. And you saw things like Schedule Once, Calendly, Qity Scheduling, and all of these applications pop up and be your scheduling tool. It helped you with scheduling outside your business. Like internally within a business, it's, it's always been pretty easy to schedule meetings with your team members because you can see everyone's calendars in Google Workspace. But outside the business, that email ping pong of going back and forward of like, are you free Tuesday? Oh, how about Wednesday? Oh no, someone took that spot now. How about at 11 a.m.? How about 12 p.m.? That was a complete mess trying to organize things. Whereas now we can just drop someone a calendar link and say, hey, book in a time that works for you. And it really saved trying to organize meetings with people. Do you remember those days? Remember when you had to email back and forward and say, hey, here's the times that I was available. And by the time they emailed you back, then you know some of those times had disappeared. Absolute nightmare. Bringing it back to the Google world, this feature has always been available in the background, but it's been a little bit hard to find and it's always looked absolutely but ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I've really not enjoyed it at all and I've never really used it myself. But Google are letting us know that they've just made a sexy update to it. And so as you can see here, yeah, big updates been made. And from here, you have the opportunity to create a page that is actually visually appealing. And if you just need the basics, this is probably going to be good enough that you don't actually need to use third-party scheduling software. And so if right now you're just using Calendly and you're just using like the absolute basics, then this might actually be enough for you to use. One of the things I like about this is it's also going to create a Google meeting automatically. You can see there it's even going to capture people's contact details when they make a booking. Now, I don't know if there is an API. I don't know if it'll connect to Zapier yet. I don't know if you'll be able to pull out those leads and automatically put them into something like a, like a CRM system or something like that, which would be very handy. But it is a pretty cool feature. It's there. It's, it's available for Google. The other thing is, as you grow and you scale a company, as you scale an organization, it makes sense to have less and less technology tools. Number one reason for that is you don't wanna run into subscription overwhelm where you are just having everything add up, your costs add up, your complexity adds up, trying to onboard staff is a complete pain in the butt because you end up in this place where you've got 3 million different software apps and unfortunately, you know, you every time you onboard a person, you have to sign them up for 10 different apps. And that's why I advocate for using as much as possible everything in the Google world rather than doubling up with Slack and Zoom. And, you know, now we can put Acuity and Calendly in the same basket as well, because ideally you wanna keep things simple. When you scale, like once you're north of 15 employees and you're, you're off to scale town, you just automatically start running into multiplications of IT challenges for each additional subscription and each additional app that you're using inside your business. So as much as possible, even if you only have 80% of the features that you're used to using, do things the Google way because it's gonna make it easier for your business to grow and scale. So we've handled calendar, let's move on to the next one. Google are now introducing an encrypted document format, which actually works on client side encryption. And what that means is it's a level of encryption that you can actually control yourself. This is pretty damn cool. This is something that is coming out. You can see it's got a little fancy logo and everything like that. Google basically gives you the opportunity to create a encrypted document. And from that encrypted document, you get to actually control the encryption. So there's actually a video about this. So why don't we, why don't we roll the video? I'm pretty sure I've got audio here. Let's give that a go. All right, so you open a document, you're gonna call it what you want. It's gonna be an encrypted document when you start it, the secret source. Okay, so yeah, this is obviously where you're gonna hide the, the 11 or 13 secret herbs and spices. Cool, and then we're gonna go ahead and share it with someone. So my understanding with this, I had a quick read of, of the document, is that Google will not be able to see any of that data because it's being encrypted on your side. I assume by your account in some way. And so, oh, here we go. You can actually use an external key service as well. Oh, that is very cool. Wonderful, all right. And so that I assume you could use something like a YubiKey. I assume you could use something like a YubiKey and give you an opportunity to actually encrypt that based on a hardware device, which is pretty damn cool. So that looks like an excellent feature. Thank you, Google, for that. I'm not sure exactly where I would use that 
in my business. I'm pretty satisfied with Google's level of encryption at the moment by default with their applications. I know that between me and Google, my connections are all encrypted. And when I'm using a Chromebox, they are so locked down on security. It's next to near impossible for anyone to get access to the actual information that's flowing back and forward between myself and Google's documents. Um, you'll see here if I open a Google document, it's probably gonna be a little hard to see, but there's a little lock key, which means that any Google document format that you're working with is in HTTPS. And that HTTPS is basically encrypting traffic between your local computer and Google servers, which means effectively you are safe in that your data between you and Google is fully encrypted. But this is an extra level of protection if you do wanna to go to an extra level of protection. Thank you, Google, for that one. Pretty groovy, huh? Okay, so this is a little bit of a fun one next. Google have now added emoji reactions to Google Documents, <laughs> which I think is just absolutely amazing. And so when you're in a Google Doc, instead of adding a comment, you can do an emoji react to a paragraph, to an image, to anything else that's happening in a document. I assume this will also come to the sheets and also come to slides as well, so you can access it from everywhere. But I just think that's absolutely amazing. I'm all for any way for us to express how we are feeling about something in the workplace, that's great. But most importantly, I'm interested in anything that helps us connect over our work. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're in, the, we're in a day and age now where remote work is becoming the norm. We've been talking about this for years and years and years pre-COVID, but remote work has been accelerated to now very quickly become the norm. And hybrid workplaces are the new norm. We are never going back to the way that we were. We've all been unplugged from the matrix and no one's going back. And so in this, space of working remotely, we really need to work out how can we still feel connected and how can we still do productive work with different team members, even though we're geographically dispersed. And something like this gives you an option to connect over your work. I'm, I'm all for it. It may seem silly. And if you're someone who is over 50 or 60 years old right now, you might be getting the, the bar humbug in the back of your mind, but trust me, this is really, really great for work and it's gonna be great for productivity and great for your team as well. So we have some additional, very small basic improvements for Google Meet. This may be one that you don't care about, but I'm gonna throw it in there anyway. Google Meet will automatically kick you out of a meeting now if you've left it open and running for a couple of minutes. It saves any embarrassment if you've forgotten to exit a meeting and left it running in the background. And what that means is after a couple of minutes, it's gonna give you a prompt and then it's gonna eventually kick you out. Now this does save one really important thing and that is that typically when you are recording a meeting and we use Google Meet recording in pretty much every single meeting that we're using, quite often I will jump on a meeting and I'll be briefing my marketing team on a set of ads that we wanna run or maybe a concept that I have for a new campaign. And because I just wanna like kind of share things stream of consciousness with my team, you know, they just hit the record button. They're like, shit, Pete's gonna say this once. He's not, he's not gonna say this the same way again. So let's hit that record button. So the team will hit record and they'll just listen to me kind of like do my vision thing and share, you know, share what I wanna share with the team. Now the team will then go and watch that back and make sure that they get the notes perfect for exactly what I've shared. Really convenient for me and works great for the team because there's you know no reliance on having to worry about you know getting notes down on the fly if I'm in stream of consciousness sharing things. And if you're an entrepreneur who's more on the visionary side of things, uh, then that would be a great feature uh, or great tip for you to use as well. However, there is a challenge. And the challenge is when it gets to the end of that meeting, maybe there's four or five people in that meeting, sometimes one person will leave the meeting open on their computer and Google won't finish off the recording and it won't render the recording until that last person has actually finished up. And so if they go and take their lunch or they take a break or whatever, you can end up waiting for someone to exit the meeting before the recording is actually finalized and sent out to the participants who were in that meeting. So this is a great feature. It's basically gonna do a, are you still there? A little bit like Netflix if you've been watching for too long and then eventually it's going to kick you out. And then, yeah, here we go. You can see another prompt there in the actual meet screen. It's gonna kick you out of there, which is very, very useful. All right, our final one. This is a pretty dope feature coming to Google Documents and that is the ability to join meetings right from your Google Docs. And so I assume this will also come to slides and to sheets as well, but right from a single document, you can jump into your meeting just using Google Meet. Now, this has not yet been enabled on my Google Docs. I can't see it here currently. I assume this is being rolled out soon. They'll probably tell us exactly where it's gonna be rolled out. Oh, here we go, starting May 2. Oh, okay, there we go, rapid release starting rollout from April 12th. So it's only been a couple of days. It'll take a couple of weeks for that to go right across the globe to everyone and I'll eventually get access to it. I'll let you know 
uh, probably on Instagram when that happens. By the way, if you're not following my Instagram, just head along to moriarty.co, that's just my surname.co, and you'll get the links to all my social profiles there, and I do stories and that kind of thing when cool new features like this come out. But basically, this is an opportunity for when you're working on a document in, for example, a single monitor environment, maybe you're working on your laptop, and you wanna connect with your team as you're collaborating on that document. We do that often when we're working with our teams. This is an opportunity to jump straight into that meeting from there. I think they're gonna bring this feature to Gmail. I think they're gonna bring this feature across, you know, pretty much across the whole Google ecosystem. And so it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty darn awesome as a feature. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what other things Google do. I, I see Google now have kind of built out the pillars of each one of their applications. They've got Gmail's been amazing for, you know, a decade. They've now got Got Google Chat, which is pretty damn good, can do pretty much everything Slack can do. They've got Google Meet, pretty damn good, can do pretty much everything that Zoom can do. Google Docs, mm, not quite there just yet, I would say, in, in what Microsoft can do but they're pretty damn good. I mean, the level of collaboration that you get in Google Docs, I haven't touched a Microsoft format document in nearly 10 years. And let me tell you, the collaboration features of Google, as well as the AI features, the stuff that, that, that goes into sheets with, um, you know, like AI driven pivot tables and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty damn amazing. Not yet enough to get the whole world across into the Google world, but we're still working on it. And so what I see now is that Google's built out all their kind of pillars in their business. And what they're doing now is they're working on the, the interoperability and, and collaboration between all of their different apps. So you can seamlessly be effectively in any one of their applications. And what I love is, you know, in things like Google Drive, you can now have your calendar available on the side. If you're in chat, you can have your calendar there. If you're in Gmail, you've basically got, that's the dashboard for all of your work all in one place. Now, if you're finding that you're on a small screen and you have to put all of these, you know, kind of like in one place, I would say consider maybe a larger monitor. I've got a 4K monitor that I'm working from here, which is why some of the things look a little bit small. And that gives me the opportunity to actually have like a document or typically my notes up on one screen. And then on the second side of the screen, I just kind of split it down the middle. On the second side of the screen, I'll have something like a meeting typically where I'm working with my team as well. So. If you've got this far, thank you so much for joining. Wonderful to have you here with me. Uh, that's it, that's the wrap. If you're interested in learning more about this, you can head along to the Google Workspace Updates blog. That blog basically has everything you need to know about Google Workspace and uh, you can subscribe to it if you want. But if you're not interested in that, well, you can just go ahead and remain subscribed to our channel. And I'm gonna be doing these from time to time if they get enough traction. So please make sure you write me a comment down the bottom and say thank you, Peter, because that will keep me doing more of these. And if there's anything else that you'd love to know about Google Google Workspace, drop me a message, hit me up on socials, jump on that link that I shared earlier and let me know if there's more content that you'd like me to create. I've been doing this a long time. We've been working with Google for over a decade now. We were one of the first partners in Australia and we're one of the only partners left in the small business space. You know, many of those businesses kind of shifted and the product got so easy to use that many business owners just do it themselves. Uh, but we've carved out a very small niche for ourselves, which is helping business owners systemize, organize and scale their business using this technology. And so we kind of like try and find the intersection between tech and business. And we help business owners from all over the world grow their businesses using Google Workspace the right way, as well as the ecosystem of add-ons, integrations, and additional apps that help small businesses. So if you're interested in learning more about that, head along to our channel, check out the other videos we've got. We've got a growth roadmap, which helps you at different stages of business, implement the right technology at the right time for your greatest success. And if you are a Google Workspace subscriber, but you're not yet working with us, we have a free offer to transfer your licenses into us. You don't pay any extra, but you get access to discounts. You get access to additional training inside our Genius Academy. You get access to our support team for a basic health check on your account. And of course, if you do need support at any time, you can upgrade to one of our concierge plans and get access to a whole lot more. Thank you so much for joining. It's wonderful to have you here. If you like this content, give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.